All right, before we go on to the next little test, I uh, was thinking between scenes about our cool little paper test here, which I really like. And there's a, a couple of things. We won't have to reproduce this test because we can already make some decisions about it based on uh, this test and the previous ones. Um, the first one is this can't be fuel. This has to be coolant on the paper because it just occurred to me that with my remote starter setup that I have, the fuel injectors aren't running. I don't have the car to on. So if you do this test, uh, it would probably be a really good idea to disable the fuel system if you crank the car um, in the traditional way with a key because otherwise you may well I would imagine get fuel on your paper but since there were no activity no activity from the fuel injector and I guess it's possible that there was a leaking fuel injector at number three all the time but that is definitely not fuel and especially now that it's dried a little bit it's clearly green like coolant the second thing is we've got a problem uh, if we think about it because I have amazing powers of observation and that is think of the leak down test the only thing that we found positive on this little coolant running out of the or being pushed out of the cylinder test was on number three but remember we also found that the leak down test was positive on cylinder number two when we did cylinder number two that was the one if you remember that actually boiled over the coolant and that was not detected by our paper test. So um, maybe, you know, it could get a little complicated. Um, maybe it's because there's a bigger leak at number three. And if we didn't have the leak at number three, then it would have pushed everything to number two. And we would have seen a positive result on number two then. But um, that makes this test a little unreliable because I have no way of fixing the leak only at number three and then seeing if the leak is detected at number two, if you follow what I'm saying. So uh, we don't really have to repeat this. That is coolant on the test. It is a good test. It is a valid test. But there is a little concern that I have that maybe it isn't as sensitive and it would have missed altogether the leak at number two, which was detected by the leak down and compression tests. All right, this next test that we're going to do is one of my personal favorite uh, shade tree tests, and that is the sound test, the starter sound test. And I've done this in, in a lot of my other videos. And what this is, is if you have a loss of compression in the cylinder, and again, this is not necessarily a head gasket test. This could be through the rings, through a valve, uh, something like that. But the idea is if you have a loss in compression in the cylinder, you can hear a change in the starter's sound when it hits that cylinder. So the idea is to disable the ignition and or fuel and then run the starter and just listen for a nice even compression. So here we're gonna need control. So um, let's go ahead and listen to a normal engine starter sound and you'll hear that it's really nice and even. So let's go ahead and do that. So now all of our spark plugs are tightened up and let's get close here so we can take a listen and let's see if we can hear a compression change. Oh yeah. Well, I don't know about you. Uh, um, I definitely don't have an ear for many engine sounds, but that I definitely do. And I can definitely hear that there is a dip. Yeah, that's, uh, that's, Positive confirmation. Now, again, that's confirmation that there is uneven compression. It doesn't tell you anything else. It just means there is uneven compression. It doesn't even mean that it's not necessarily in or out of spec. Although in my experience, uh, that sound with a starter uh, means you've got a problem. So um, let's do another test. All right, for these next tests, we will have the engine running. And this next one's gonna be just the classic one. We're gonna look for billows of white smoke coming out of the exhaust, the absolute telltale sign that you have a blown head gasket. So let's see if it happens on this car. Let me do this. I'm gonna open the garage door a little bit because it is cold outside. And uh, that's one of the problems with the looking for white smoke out of the tailpipe test is that if it's cold outside, well, all cars do that. So let me go ahead and do that real quick. Okay. Again, we're, we're scientists here. We're working off the null hypothesis theory. So that is um, show that the test is going to fail. And the absence of proof that the test fails is actually the support for it. So we want there to be cold air. We want to see steam out of this exhaust pipe and the control car, ideally, to show that this test is 
is unreliable. If we cannot do that, then it's going to be good. I will tell you, I already, uh, one of the reasons that the car was here for me to do the diagnosis, it does not put smoke out of the tailpipe. Um, so let's go ahead and we're going to start this car and start the control car and see if there's any difference in the exhaust output. All right, sorry for talking over two engines here, but uh, we can see here at the exhaust, uh, which is right there, that there's, there's no white smoke coming out and I'm trying to position the light so we would be able to detect it. And then let's spin around to the control car. And uh, this actually has dual exhaust on it, so we need to back up a little bit. And we don't see any smoke coming out of the exhaust there either. So uh, this test is negative and I could of course rev the engine and stuff like that but uh, honestly I already did that and it didn't really put anything out that was detectable and it certainly wouldn't be on camera. So uh, we're going to call this kind of an unreliable test again. This is kind of a, a early stage of um, failure. Uh, the, the compression test normally on a blown head gasket, the compression test is going to be like 50 or even less than 50 and it was well over 100 on this car. So I don't really expect that we would see a whole lot of coolant burning here. All right, another common shade tree test. You take off the radiator cap, you run the engine before it warms up and you check for bubbles in the coolant. Um, I can already tell you right now, this is not going to be a great test because it's hard to find a car that won't do that. But we'll go ahead and see if there's any difference between this and our control car. And let's see bubbles. Bubble, bubble, toil and trouble. And uh, we do have a lot of steam coming out of the radiator, but of course I've been running this for a little bit. Um, and I don't see any bubbles. Maybe a little bit there, maybe just a couple there. Yeah, those are, I don't know if that's bubbles or the water pump moving. It doesn't seem like bubbles so much. All right, over at the Trans Am and look at that. Uh, there are definitely some bubbles in there. You can actually see bubbles. And this car definitely does not have a blown head gasket. And there's all kinds of reasons you might expect to see bubbles. Sometimes cars just do it, but uh, not really too crazy about this test at all. All right, well, definitely not my favorite test of the day by a long shot. It's the first test we've had where there is a very real possibility of making a false diagnosis, a false positive. Um, I, I work on GM cars all the time, and I can tell you it's hard to find a GM car particularly that doesn't have bubbles come up through the coolant for whatever reason. I think it has something to do with the overflow tank design or something, but not a very reliable test as you can see. So, uh, well, let's move on to something that may be less reliable because it's one I've never done before, but uh, check this one out. All right, so back uh, in an earlier time when I used to do cars a lot more than I have time to do now, I used to regularly be at the salvage yard all the time, and there was a guy there named Cedric. And Cedric uh, made his living basically pulling engines and transmissions and parts from the yard. Well, actually, I think he made his living selling crack, but I think this supplemented that job. And he used to do a test that he called the sizzle test. And what he would do is take a piece of aluminum foil and a lighter and he would heat the aluminum foil up really hot like a stove and then dribble some oil onto it. If the oil sizzled like it's uh, when you add water to oil in a frying pan and if it sizzled like that then he said the head gasket has to be blown because there's water in the oil. And if it doesn't, if it just smokes, then there's no water in the oil. Doesn't mean the engine's good, but it does mean no blown head gasket by our definition. So uh, let's do that. Let's try a sizzle test on both the car with the head gasket blown and the control car and see if old Cedric was right. All right, so what I'm gonna do for this test is I've got my shop heater here, which I know the surface gets plenty, plenty hot. And uh, we're going to do this scientifically. You don't just test out a procedure by just uh, doing like the guy says and calling it quits. That's what most people would do. Not me. Back off, man. I'm a scientist. What we're going to do is make sure that this test actually would be capable of finding coolant in the oil. So what I'm going to do is uh, 
do a negative control first. We're going to put a little motor oil on here, just a little bit, and see what happens. Wow, that's hot. That's really hot. Hurry up. Come on. There we go. Okay, so there's our motor oil on there, and it doesn't look like it's doing much of anything. It is smoking, though, and uh, I don't want to have the whole shop smell like smoke, so uh, we're going to go ahead and call that negative and clean that off. Boy, that really does smoke, and it stinks, too. Now, of course, what I have is coolant mixed with oil. And listen to it sizzle. If this doesn't sizzle, then I'm not going to be very hopeful about this test. Let's see what happens. Oh, wow. <laughs> okay, it definitely sizzles. So uh, it does look like there may be some hope for this test. And it actually smells like oil and coolant. Okay, so what I'm going to do is let's go ahead and get a sample from the Trans Am, which does not have a blown head gasket, and it should behave very much like our first test. And the Trans Am oil, as always, is fairly freshly changed, so I'll drop a little bit on there. And it doesn't seem to be doing much of anything. I certainly don't hear it sizzle, and it's definitely smoking a lot. All right, that is really nasty. I hope my smoke alarm doesn't go off. So let's go ahead and do some of the oil from the car with the blown head gasket. Let's see. Well, I'll be darned. Look at that. That is amazing. It absolutely did sizzle. Okay, I am not going to lie. I never in a million years thought that that would work. That was amazing. Absolutely amazing. It actually turns out to be one of the more reliable tests, as a matter of fact, because we didn't detect any oil in the coolant, even draining it out of the drain pan or anything. Um, I am impressed. That's pretty good. There's one other test that I uh, do. Um, but I'm not going to be able to do it on this car, unfortunately. And that is what I call a heater hose test. And in that test, what I'll do, if you have combustion gases going into the cooling system, then what often will happen is it'll build up a lot of pressure in the cooling system. And pretty soon after starting the car, before it really even warms up, you can find the heater hoses get really, really, really hard, much harder than in a car just simply because the temperature increases. And uh, I actually remember working on a Range Rover one time that did have a cracked block. It actually had a cracked block. And within three or four minutes of starting the car, it would actually build up so much pressure in the cooling system, it would actually blow the hoses right off of the spigots. And uh, as a matter of fact, if you even tried really tightening the hoses down, it would actually just burst the hose. Um, I'm not going to be able to do it on this car because remember there's a problem with the radiator where the radiator neck is all busted up and the radiator cap does not seal. So I'm never going to build a lot of pressure in the system, but I just wanted to point that out as a possible test that you can do. And uh, what we're going to do now is one final test, and this is going to be an experimental one. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to put some dye in the cooling system and then run the car for a little bit and then see if I can detect the dye either out of the exhaust or on the spark plugs or something like that. Obviously, if I detect the dye from the, cooling, from the coolant on any thing associated with the combustion, the exhaust pipe or the spark plugs or something like that, if I see the dye, then that would be positive indication of a blown head gasket. Um, I've never done this before. It's something that I just thought of. I was informed by one of my regular viewers, Jeffrey Wilson, who's a professional mechanic, that uh, this is actually an accepted GM test, it turns out. So that means this should work. So let's go ahead and put some fluorescent dye in the system and see if we can detect it in any combustion associated parts. All right, so this is just a little uh, fluorescent ultraviolet fluorescing dye and a UV light. And the idea is that under the UV light, this dye fluoresces like a really, really bright yellow. It's unmistakable. So we're just going to put a little bit into the cooling system there. And actually, I only have a little bit left anyway. So we'll just add that in. And um, I'll have to find something to try to plug the radiator up so I don't lose the dye as the engine heats up. But what we're going to do is heat the engine up uh, until it's fully warm. While this is warming up, I'm going to do the same thing on my Trans Am. I'm going to put a little dye in the cooling system. I guess it doesn't hurt to see if I might have an external coolant leak or something. 
and then we'll um, be able to see that that does not have coolant or dye in the exhaust. All right, I've let both cars run for a little while. Let's see if we can find some dye. All right, I'm back at the exhaust pipe here, and I highly doubt this is going to show up on camera because it needs to be dark in the garage to see this. But uh, if that isn't showing up in the camera, there is a little puddle of uh, fluorescent dye. That is, it's kind of diluted, but it definitely is fluorescing. And of course, we have our negative control car that we can compare. But uh, hopefully that'll show up on the camera, and I apologize if it doesn't. Amazing. I would not have expected that to work. Maybe the spark plugs will look a little better. But uh, let's go ahead and uh, let me take a look at the Trans Am. And this I know isn't going to show up on camera, but I can tell you that uh, on at least these, this half of the exhaust, um, there is uh, certainly some steam built up there, but there is nothing fluorescing even remotely, not even close. So uh, that is interesting. The fluorescent dye test did work. All right, so on this next test, I've taken out a couple of spark plugs. We're going to do a blind controlled test here so that uh, you guys can play along. But uh, one of these spark plugs is from a good cylinder, and one of these spark plugs is from, a, um, is from cylinder number three, which we know has a pretty significant coolant leak. So let's turn out the lights and see if we can detect any coolant on one of these spark plugs. And I have to tell you, both of them look identical. And this one here on the right, that is our spark plug that was from cylinder number three. And I just noticed there's a little goop there, but actually that's not even fluorescent. It looks like it on the camera, but it is not. And this guy here, nowhere around the spark plug is there anything fluorescent on the spark plug. So that's interesting. It was positive in the exhaust, but not in the spark plug. Um, so all kinds of explanations for why that may be, obviously. But let's do one more thing, just out of curiosity. All right, well, uh, what my idea was was to repeat the paper test again, my little dot blot test, I guess we can call it. And uh, what's interesting is now with the engine warmed up, no coolant sprayed on my paper. What I was obviously hoping to do was be able to get the coolant spray on the paper and then detect it very clearly with the UV light. But this also explains why the spark plugs are negative. Clearly with the cylinder fully warmed up and hot, um, there must be some issue where everything dries up in there and I would expect the dye to still be active, but I don't know what the chemistry of the dye is and maybe it's not, but I couldn't get a sample here. And this is kind of a, a, another little lesson that uh, the paper test, at least apparently on this engine, has to be done with the engine and cold. So um, the only problem is I've got to do this uh, head gasket fix. I would let the engine sit overnight and cool and um, try it again tomorrow, but it's pretty insignificant because um, you know we, we know that the test uh, did work when the engine was cold. So uh, what I've got to do now is set up another video where we fix this using some liquid block sealant. Um, but that's it for this video. Uh, I really had a good time with this one and I hope you did too and I hope you found it helpful. So thanks for watching.